Hello everyone, this is D. Chinnagokari. So in this video, I am going to explain about the one more colligative property that is depression in freezing point, so which belongs to the solution chapter. So here, depression in freezing point, it is also one colligative property. So here, colligative property means the property, the property which depends on the property which depends on the amount of amount of non volatile non volatile solute but not on their but not on their chemical nature chemical nature that is called what colligative property colligative property so here in colligative properties the property the property which depends on the amount of non volatile solute so here depression in freezing point so what is the depression in freezing point before studying the depression in freezing point, let us know about the freezing point. What is freezing point? First of all, freezing point. So, what is a freezing point? Freezing point generally we can say that we can say the temperature at which a liquid changes to solid that is called what freezing point so and it can be defined as generally the the temperature the temperature at which the temperature at which the vapor pressure of liquid the vapor pressure of liquid is equal to vapor pressure of vapor pressure of solid that is called what freezing point for example when you are uh, when you are discussing in the case of water so here i am taking the water it is a pure liquid so it is only solvent solvent is here what only water so here at given temperature it has some certain particular pressure some certain particular pressure due to the gas present on the surface so this is known as vapor pressure of solvent solvent that is P naught and when you decrease the temperature when you decrease the temperature lower the temperature so gradually the vapor pressure is decreases and here the liquid changes into ice liquid changes into ice so that the vapor pressure is decreases and the vapor pressure of so now here vapor pressure is equal to vapor pressure of solid so here vapor pressure of this liquid is equal to vapor pressure of this solid so the temperature at which we can achieve this condition this is called what freezing point and this is called freezing point tf not of solvent tf not of the solvent and when you see in the same case for the water only for the water only <coughs> when you are adding a non volatile solute when you are adding a, a non volatile solute 
so when you are adding a non volatile solute so i will show the non volatile solute with different color so when you add a non volatile solute so the non volatile solute occupy the surface area we know so that the number of liquid or the vapor pressure is less your vapor pressure of your vapor pressure of solution ps is very less we already know these things okay so here it is the solution it contains solvent so now solvent let us consider as the water and solute it is non volatile solute let us consider glucose so this is the non volatile solute so when you add this non volatile solute what happens the vapor pressure is decreases so that when you cool this when you cool this when you cool or lower the temperature when you cool this at some at the some of the particular temperature this this also this solution also changes into solid state this solution is also changes into what solid state so because of it is having very less vapor vapor pressure so do again it is having initially only it is having less vapor pressure so to equalize the vapor pressure to the this solid here we need to cool at lower and lower temperatures so now at a particular temperature it is converted into solid state this is called freezing point of freezing point of solution so when you observe the freezing point of solution and freezing point of solvent here freezing point of freezing point of solvent here t of not is greater than here freezing point of solvent t f not is greater than t f yes so the delta t f here delta delta t f is equal to the difference between the freezing point of the solvent minus minus freezing point of the solution means delta t f is equal to delta t f not minus t f s means it is the difference of freezing point of the solvent to freezing point of the solution so this we can understand by drawing a by plotting a graph in a better manner okay so now let us plot a graph here plot a graph in between vapor pressure and temperature so this is the vapor pressure and here it is the temperature we are taking so here when you plot a graph when you plot a curve temperature with vapor pressure first i am taking only solvent we already know at a given temperature solvent is having more vapor pressure the slowly the vapor pressure is decreases as temperature is decreases as temperature decreases vapor pressure is also decreases and at a particular temperature the vapor pressure will become equal to the vapor pressure of solid so that temperature is called that temperature is called t not and that pressure is called that temperature is called t not and pressure is called p not why because so that pressure is called p not so because this is the boiling freezing point of the solvent only and it is the vapor pressure of the solvent at the freezing point p not and when you take the solution solution 1 here so we already know solution 1 is having less vapor pressure 
so it is having very less vapor pressure and when you decrease the temperature here also the vapor pressure uh, gradually decreases and at particular temperature the vapor pressure of the liquid is become to vapor pressure of solid so this particular temperature is called freezing point of solution 1 or t1 and this pressure is called p1 next when you take the solution to solution to with increase in the concentration of non volatile solute so here it is the solution to so more number of solute particles means less vapor pressure so here also the vapor pressure gradually decreases and at a particular temperature the vapor pressure of this liquid will become vapor pressure of solid that pressure is called p2 and that particular temperature is called t2 so from this graph only we can observe that t t naught is greater than t1 as well as t2 so now let us draw some curves here so here let us we can assume here like a triangle shape here so here we get this like a triangle shape now let us label them as let us label them as a b c d e so it is also looking like a triangle it is also looking like a triangle so in this in that diagram in the diagram triangle a c d equivalent to triangle a b e triangle a b e. so their ratios is also constant so if the triangle a c d is equal equivalent to a b e a c e equivalent to a b e therefore their ratios also their side ratios also constant so here for example ad ad by ae is equal to ac by ab their side ratios also constant so here what is ad here what is ad ad is the change in pressure the difference in the vapor pressure of solvent and solution to so that that is p naught minus p2 by ae the difference in between the vapor pressure of solvent and solution 1 p naught and solution 1 that is p naught minus p1 that is equal to ac what is ac or a2c means the difference between the freezing temperature of the solution sorry solvent and solution 2 that is t naught minus t2 and ab ab is the the difference between the temperature of solvent and solution 1 so that is t naught minus t1 so here we can write this this as delta p2 by delta p1 that is equal to delta t2 by delta t1 delta t2 by delta t1 so we can get one conclusion here therefore delta p is directly proportional to delta t so we can get this conclusion here <coughs> so from this graph also we can observe we can get one conclusion that solvent freeze solvent freezes at high temperature solution freezes at very low temperature so with this reason only by using this phenomenon only in cold countries so they will sprinkle some salt on the ice so that the water freezes at low temperature less than the 0 degree celsius low temperature means water freezes at 0 degree celsius and here when you add some non volatile solute to it the water freezes at less than 0 degree celsius so that they can clean very 
easily right so now we have one conclusion here that is when we add a non volatile solute when you add a non volatile solute to the solvent the vapor pressure decreases and freezing point is also decreases so the decrease in freezing point is called what depression in freezing point so now what are the mathematical equations related to the this freezing point now let us see so here mathematical equations related to the this freezing point here so here according to raoult law according to raoult law according to raoult law so here we already know delta p by p not that is equal to mole fraction of b so here delta p is equal to p not into mole fraction of b so now delta p is equal to p not mole fraction of b means number of moles of b by number of moles of b plus number of moles of a so here in very dilute solution in very dilute in very dilute solution number of moles of a is far greater than the number of moles of b so that number of moles of b neglected in the denominator term so that delta p is equal to p not into number of moles of b by number of moles of a so here delta p is equal to p not into number of moles of b formula weight of b by molecular weight of b into number of moles of a it is in the denominator so that molecular weight of a by weight of a so here for pure solvent for pure solvent for pure solvent p not and molecular weight of a is constant molecular weight of a and pressure of pure solvent is constant and remove that constants so here we can get delta p is directly proportional to wb by molecular weight of b into 1 by weight of a so that here we already know delta p is directly proportional to delta t so now you substitute delta t here so that delta t is also directly proportional to weight of b by molecular weight of b into 1 by weight of a so here to remove this proportionality to remove this proportionality here we are going to keep a constant that is delta t is equal to k into weight of b by molecular weight of b into 1 by weight of a where k is called elevation constant k is called elevation constant k is called here elevation constant so let us consider this as the equation 1 now here we can describe this equation for different type of cases so what are that cases we will discuss now so that is case 1 case 1 so here what is case 1 here if weight of b by molecular weight of b is equal to 1 which means 
number of moles of non volatile solute is equal to 1 mole and weight of A is equal to 1, 1 gram, which means 1 mole of solute dissolved in the 1 gram. What is the case 1 here? Case 1 means 1 mole of 1 mole of non volatile solute dissolved dissolved in 1 gram of non volatile solute no, sorry 1 gram of 1 gram of volatile solvent volatile solvent so that when you substitute these values in the equation 1 here we will get delta t is equal to k so now this k is called here k is called elevation constant elevation constant k is called here elevation constant and here this is the case one and when you see the another cases so if you want note down you can note down okay you can pass and note down next when you see the case two when you see the case two here so your case two is when when w b by m w of b is equal to 1 means 1 mole dissolved in weight of a is equal to 100 grams. So, what is the meaning of that here 1 mole 1 mole of non volatile non volatile solute 1 mole of non volatile solute dissolved dissolved in 100 grams of 100 grams of volatile solvent volatile solvent solvent a so that when you substitute this in the equation 1 so here we will get so that is equation 1 what is equation 1 here delta t is equal to k into w b by molecular weight of b into 1 by weight of a. So, here according to the given condition delta t is equal to k into 1 by 1 into 1 by 100. Therefore, delta t is equal to k by 100. So, this is also called this is equal to k dash. So, here k dash is called molecular elevation constant, molecular elevation constant, k dash is called molecular elevation constant. So, now you substitute the k dash value in the equation 1. So, that what you will get in the k dash 1 therefore, delta t is equal to or simply here k is equal to 100 into k dash. So, if you substitute the k value in the equation 1 here you will get 100 into k dash into weight of b by molecular weight of b into weight of a. So, this is the case to here k dash we already know it is called molecular elevation constant. Next to case 3, case 3. So, in case 3, so what is case 3? When, when w b by molecular weight of b is equal to 1 means 1 mole of non volatile solute 
weight of a volatile sol volatile solvent is equal to thousand grams. So that so what is this case three means when one mole of when one mole of non volatile non volatile solute dissolve in when one mole of non volatile solute dissolve in 1000 grams of solvent 1000 grams of solvent a so that how we can get the equation here how we can get the equation so when you substitute that values therefore delta t is equal to k into 1 by 1 into 1 by 1000 therefore that implies delta t is equal to k by 1000 so this is also equal to kb so here therefore k is equal to 1000 into kb here kb is called molar elevation constant kb is called molar elevation kb is called molar elevation molar elevation constant kb is called molar elevation constant so when you substitute the this k value in that equation 1 here we will get delta t so delta tf so everywhere you write delta tf delta tf is equal to 1000 into kb into weight of b by molecular weight of b into 1 by weight of a so this is the final equation here we will get so this is called here kb is called molar elevation constant what are the units of kb moles kelvin inverse like that it is having units okay this is about kb okay now the relation between the molar elevation constant and molality molar elevation constant and molality okay next let us discuss about the relation between molality and molar elevation constant sorry depression constant so here relation between relation between delta tf and delta tf and molality relation between delta tf and molality relation between delta tf and molality so here we already know molality molality m is equal to weight by molecular weight of b into 1000 by weight of a in grams okay now we send this 1000 this side m by 1000 is equal to weight of b by molecular weight of b into 1 by weight of a in grams so this part what we are going, what I am going to circle here this part 
is same so that instead of this part can i write this one so that you will get delta tf is equal to 1000 into kb into m by 1000 so here 1000 1000 will get cancel delta tf is equal to m into kb so this is the relation between the delta tf and molality next to relation between delta tf relation between delta tf and delta tf and rlvp relative lowering of vapor pressure so here rlvp relative lower rlvp is equal to p naught minus ps by p naught that is equal to mole fraction of b that is number of moles of b by number of moles of a so here p naught minus ps by p naught is equal to weight of a by molecular weight of weight of b by molecular weight of b into molecular weight of a by molecular weight of a by weight of a so you send this molecular weight this side so we are we already know p naught minus ps is equal to delta p delta p by p naught delta p by p naught divided by molecular weight of a that is equal to weight of b by molecular weight of b into 1 by weight of a so that here also this part and this part is same so that you can substitute this part in the place of this one therefore delta tf is equal to 1000 into kb into delta p by p naught by weight of a so this is the relation between the this is the relation between relation between delta tf and rl vp next to relation between the delta tf and relation between delta tf and delta tb delta tf and delta tb so here we already know delta tb is equal to 1000 into kb into one weight of b by molecular weight of b into 1 by weight of a so if you send this 1000 kb this side that is delta tb by you send the kb this side kb that is equal to 1000 into weight of b by molecular weight of b into 1 by weight of a so here this 1000 weight of b molecular weight of b instead of this we can write delta tb by kb so therefore we can write this equation we can write this equation as delta tf is equal to delta tb into kb sorry dear delta kf here kf you write here kf here also okay here also a small correction here also this is not kb it is kf 
so here delta tb by kb kf kf by kb so therefore we can write we can write as can write as delta tb into kf is equal to delta tf into delta tf you can write the equations delta tb into kf that is equal to delta tf into kb so this is the relation between the here this is the relation between the delta tf and delta tb means elevation elevation in boiling point depression in freezing point so here what is kb kb we already know molar elevation constant another name it is called sorry k so here it is not kb it is kf so here kf is called molar depression constant sorry here here also you are just simple simply it is kf is called molar depression constant molar molar depression constant so here kb we already know ebullioscopic constant ebullio scopic constant ebullioscopic constant here kf is called chiroscopic chiroscopic constant so delta tb elevation in elevation in boiling point elevation in boiling point delta tf is equal to depression in freezing point depression in freezing point okay so this is about the total information about depression in freezing point in the next video i will this i will explain one more colligative property thank you